Hello Animasaurus world and thank you again for joining me for another Interviewasaurus. Today I'm very lucky to have with me a, a dear friend who I've known for quite a long time, worked on quite a few different projects. Um, I'd like to welcome to the microphone uh, Thomas Claxton. Thanks Tom. Hey guys, how you doing? How's it going Kim? Um, thanks for joining me in our virtual world still. We're still all in little secret parts of the world. Um, seems like this is never ending and it's become more and more sort of an, a thing that happens. Yeah, standard. Standard. Yeah, I'm actually from my own little studio at home right now, so... Yeah, <laughs> always good to be in a studio at home. <laughs> um, so, for people who have never met you before, Thomas, do you want to just give everyone a bit of an idea about where you fit within the world of the animation industry? Um, sure. So, I'm currently a pipeline technical director working at Plastic Wax. Um, essentially, my job is when things break, we fix them. Yeah. That's the pipeline's main role. And our job is to make sure that we can get data from point A to point B as effectively and as efficiently as possible without any sort of breakdown and without people screaming, without, you know, fire and brimstone and all the pain and misery that happens in terms of animation pipelines. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Pain in animation pipeline is not a good thing. But, of course, mm. animators are actually pretty good at breaking things. But, you know, so is render engines and everything as well. We're good at oh, just God, breaking yes. stuff. Um, so, so let's just wind back a little bit, you know, because um, Pipeline TD is not something that a lot of people actually just go towards. What kind of got you interested in that to start off with? Um, well, it started off uh, all the way back at um, my first job. I was working as a technical animator at Animal Logic with a really, really good group of people. So I was working under Simon Bull and Oliver Dunn, and they were performance support TDs. And I was very, very lucky to be um coached by them under working underneath them because i got to see a whole range of different departments and how everyone interacted and as part of that you kind of understand that everything kind of slots together um, and what really drew me to the whole pipeline aspect was i liked the way that data was handled and transferred from one department to the next so for example it started with layout it was how does the camera get um, to layout from the tracking department and then from layout to the animation department and so on and so forth until it's a final rendered image. And that kind of caught my attention. So I was like, okay, um, I really would like to explore this a little bit more. Uh, so I worked towards becoming a TD at Animal Logic and then went to Mill Film, came back to Animal Logic for a bit of time here and there, just bounced around and built up some experience just as a uh, generally different department TD. So it was Anim TD, uh, Tracking TD, Layout TD, and now pipeline. So this is kind of the culmination of a few years of just exploring different departments and then trying to figure out how to slot them all together. Ah, yeah. And, and that's where you really see pipeline as well. Pipeline is, um, it is like it says pipeline. It's from beginning to end, somehow trying to funnel everyone who's adding stuff into it um, and how that data is actually sort of, sort of split up. So, so, you know, you've worked at different locations. Have you seen that the pipeline between each place you've worked at is very different? Yes. Oh, my gosh, yes. Yeah. Um, so, like, the larger the studio gets, the more that needs to be invested in the pipeline. Um, that being said, small studios do need a lot more in terms of pipeline structure. They need some sort of basic... Um, framework to work towards but the larger you get the more departments that you have the more emphasis needs to be put on actually structuring and managing a pipeline effectively so um, thinking back to the animal logic days uh, handling data was going to be different than compared to mil the mill film days compared to the plastic wax days and each one has their own set of uh, intricate requirements yep. that need to be done so for example with animal logic and your film they're handling more big vfx shows whereas with plastic wax um it's a lot smaller projects but a lot faster pace so you have to kind of take those into account do you find that there's then difference between a uh, like project to project you know because you've handled different projects within the same company do you find that the projects actually change requirements as well as a td yes yes they do um so for example uh a VFX show compared to a fully animated feature film are going to require very, very different things. So in a VFX show, you're going to need uh, live cameras, you're going to need image plates, you're going to need tracking data, you're going to need 3D mocap data, 
versus animated uh, features where you would need more previous information, you would need more um, better layout structures, you need people to have a better understanding of cameras, you need them to be working a little bit more with the 3D assets rather than the live action plates. Yeah. Wow. Uh, uh, so it, it, it varies, varies massively depending upon what you need. Cool. So with that that big wide variance of things which you're kind of dealing with, you know, because there's a lot you're dealing with, what's sort of a basic, is there kind of something that links it all together? Like what what do you use from day to day? You know, what's your what's your tools that you use? Um, so this is where it's going to become a little bit interesting is that we as TDs need to understand how every DCC, so um like Houdini, Maya, Max, uh, XSI, we need to understand how all those tools work. And one of the benefits that we have to all of those tools, which is a big industry step forward, is that they all use Python as a programming language. So our job as pipeline is to build uh, our data to work with the Python systems that we have for each DCC um, to help create things and make sure that things can pass through effectively. So our main day-to-day -day tool is actually writing our own tools to do what we need to do. <laughs> <laughs> Doing custom stuff to go, okay, none of this works. Let's just make it talk to each other. Yep. <laughs> yep. Oh, nice. So, so does that come back to you having a, do you have a, like a coding background or did you actually pick it up while you started actually finding out what you needed to do? So um, before I even got to uni, I was very lucky that I was pushed to learn. Um, I was pushed to learn to C++ and C-based programming um, by members of my own family because <laughs> they're just like, this is the future. You need to follow this path. It's going to be the way. Everyone's going to be programming. In that. My uncle's an engineer, so that's kind of one of the reasons why that happened. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, look, this, I like this. This is cool. Um, and then I got to uni and I learned more from the animation side. So I went to UTS and did a Bachelor of Animation and Design. But whilst I was at uni, I did my electives all in the programming stream. So I did programming fundamentals, and that just gave me a bit more foundational knowledge. And then as I've come out into the industry, like my knowledge has become both broader and streamlined in that I have a better understanding of what I did five years ago and what benefits I have now um, for programming, but also my knowledge of the languages is now very much like, oh, I know how to do this in Houdini, but if I take this away and try to do it by itself standalone, it would not work completely at all. <laughs> yeah. 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 Each um I you know, each program uh, has its place and can add something into a pipeline. It's just actually, like you said, extrapolating data is one of the main things, I guess, you've really got to uh, know how to get the data out. Like like you're saying, some programs, it's easy to kind of unwrap and go, oh yeah, we just want that bit. Um, yep. But um, you know, other programs, I guess, is just a lot harder to manipulate that data from. Yeah. Yep. Um, like the best example of that would be uh, Maya. Maya is the best example of having your code looks like an orange and you're just peeling back layers so that you can just pull a bit out and just tweak it. But then you have to understand that when you jump from Maya to say 3ds Max and the language is like Python, but it's a completely different underlying structure. And instead of being like an orange, it's more like an onion in that it's a layer on upon a layer upon a layer upon a layer upon a layer. And oh. things just explode when you get to the center and it smells bad and you're crying and everyone's miserable. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love that interpretation of 3DS Max. That's fabulous. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so, um, yeah. <laughs> so in your in your day-to-day -day working life, who's sort of the people, you know, you say you, you work, you know, with the whole pipeline. Is there any particular kind of group of people you work with more often than not? Or, or do you just have to work with everyone? Um, we, we have to play nice with everyone because everyone is to a pipeline TD. Everyone is important. Everyone's needs and valid and points are as valid as everyone else's. Um, that being said, there's a layer of communication. So for example, um, what we would want as like being a TD is if someone has an issue and it's an animator on the floor, they send the issue up to their lead, which would then send it to the supervisor, which would then send it to the pipeline team, which would then get it down to the technician. But what tends to happen in the whole animator world, animators are like, why would I go up and down when I could just go across? 
<laughs> so we get tickets straight away. Yep. Yeah. 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 I got a problem. I just want to talk to someone who's going to fix it. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, I'm going to go to the, I'm going to go directly to the person who can fix it by hook or by crook. They're going to fix my problem and it's going to be solved. And yeah, that's and, it. And it doesn't always work. <laughs> no, no. Like, realistically, if we're talking about people who would interact mostly on a day to day, the biggest one is production. Um, because production is in charge of making sure that, um, all the, qualms that are voiced by the animation team especially and animation team all the other departments i'm singling out animation just because i've been working on their stuff today uh, <laughs> um all the qualms that are voiced by the different teams just get put up and then we can ticket that and document it and then if it requires a new tool being built then we build a new tool um and we put time aside for it but yeah it would be production because they're the ones who would be you know, going, okay, this is more important than this, and this is more important than this, and this is not so important, so we can put that to the side for a little bit. Ah, yes, yeah. Yeah, that, that, that line of communication is very important without, especially bigger productions, actually knowing who to talk to and who to take um, reference from. So the people who control the money are usually the ones who actually you have to talk to. <laughs> yes, they're the, they're the ones who, they're the, well, they put the money, where they put the dollar dollar bills where it needs to go. That's the main thing. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Well, um, you know, you've been, you know, around the industry for quite a bit now. You've stored up quite a lot of, you know, backlog of information. So I know you kind of were telling me before about something you've got brewing on the sideline that you've been developing. You want to just talk a bit more about that? I've been working in the industry for five, six years now. And one of the biggest things that I've seen is burnout. And burnout is such a big problem, especially for juniors, because they'll come in and animation will be their entire life or layout will be their entire life. And they will have no kind of fallback or system behind it to go, okay, I need to take a break from animation. I'm going to go do something else. So one of the things I, I fell into that right in the first year. And then I was really lucky. Um, I was doing strength training long before that. So outside I was going to the gym at least four days a week mm. and I was competing. I was doing strongman and, uh, powerlifting and various other strength feats and that kind of stuff. Um, and now eh, four or five years down the track, I've started coaching and started doing my own coaching to try and help people in that similar kind of situation. Cause I don't want to see people burn out. Yeah. Like that's, that's the big, you don't, you never want to see it. You never want to see people get um, tired or exhausted because, and hate their job. Yeah. So my hopeful way is to try and give back to the community a little bit by giving people something else to do. That's not animation. That's not programming. That's not making a feature film. Um, so coaching people how to do, how to lift weights is one of my ways of helping people try and get a little bit better. Yeah. Cause, cause as you said, that really helped you through, cause you know, you've actually gone through competitions with that as well. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, so yeah, it's, it's great to hear that there's, you know, something else that, you know, especially juniors you do you come in all starry eyed and bright eyed and go oh i've made it in and i've got to work really really hard really really diligently and forget about the balance of life which is something like you said it's it's a really important part of uh being human you've got to have some yeah. balance so yeah and yep. it's one of the big things i think it's one of the big things that gets forgotten in this industry is that people throw balance out the window because we have such tight deadlines we have you know short turnarounds, the money's not there, people need to get work done. So they completely like neglect their health, their physical fitness, their capability, they neglect their families, they neglect their relationships, and it does damage. So it's good to just find an outlet that's not this industry and just do something different for a little bit. Yeah. That being said, I love this industry to bits, but if you can keep around in this industry longer, then definitely do something to help that. <laughs> Yeah, because yeah, cause I know a lot of people who they, they, they sit there on the computer all day actually animating and then they go home and sit on the computer and play games. Like for my mm. mind, that just feels so counterproductive to go, oh, you're just sitting down again. But um, yeah, yeah. I, I, I got very similar things to you. I've got, you know, I got my garden out the back, which I go out and play in the garden or I've got my rollerblades, which I go skating on and things like that. But yeah, that, that activity keeps your brain functioning. It keeps you healthy. It, it means you can put more into your animation or or your pipeline work when you actually sit down in front of the computer to go yes let's let's do this it just gives you that 
kind of it gives you that disconnect so that it allows your brain to refresh and then you can be more focused the next time you come back in yeah yeah yep. which uh, that's just what i found but yeah yep. and and what is is there anywhere that people can go to actually find out stuff which you've got for this yeah thing? um so i i am coaching currently so i'm coaching strength and conditioning through my instagram handle which is at the nerdy strongman so the dot nerdy dot strongman um <laughs> and i've just started up my own facebook page which has i'm going to be putting up more information about um strength and conditioning basic training protocols things you can do to help kind of alleviate some of the tension focus a little bit better on health and wellness um so that will be the nerds uh nerd strong sc snc um i'm sure kim will put the link yep. down the bottom but yep. yeah so we're just getting that started up now um yeah i'm i'm gonna put up a special uh, discount promotion so at anamsaurus uh if you enter that in the checkout you'll be able to get a discounted online program Ah, oh, brilliant that is great yeah. so so everyone who's around and actually you know does look like looking after themselves and wanting a long career in the industry rather than just being a flash in the pan and getting burnout and going throw this away i don't want to do it definitely look into what thomas has put up because it's well worth the time and effort to look personally in yourself for strength and conditioning so thank you very much, Thomas. I really appreciate your time actually sharing, like especially what Pipeline does because a, a lot of people on the floor can just forget how important it is that you guys actually do so much work behind the scenes that just doesn't get noticed. So thank you for sharing that. Anytime, anytime. Always happy to help, Kim. Awesome. And thank you, everybody, so much for listening. Um, check out Thomas's links. I'll have them in the description below. And until the next time, we'll all say bye-bye. Thank you.